So uh, how do we start these things? I'm Andy. Uh, I'm Arnie. We're going to review some <laughs> fucking movies. We're going to review some fucking movies. That was the greatest intro ever, man. It's, it's the greatest intro ever, dude. It's fucking great. All right. Man. Did you watch The Hunt? I did. I watched the shit out of The Hunt. I did it's, watch The Hunt. It was a great watch. Like, you know, like it was those, super uh, quick. You know those, those like, yeah, you know those like thin books that are like super good reads? Yeah. And you're like, I didn't want to invest too much time in this anyway. Right. I'm glad you're a short read. Yeah. <laughs> and you just For like, sure. man, you can just gulp through it because it's just, it's just one of those like, yeah, it's a page turner, but like not because it's riveting or like brilliant. It's because it's like, I don't know. This was a, I thought this was actually a good palate cleanser from like emotional stuff. For sure. It was definitely a quick, easy, like... Uh, fucking like it was just fun it was fun yeah. and easy to digest it had some yeah. really good acting though yes awesome actors too great cast but like uh it also just kind of stayed within the political climate of uh dude there's this like thing happening now with movies that like were made pre-quarantine and all social unrest and everything just feels different in these movies um i think we should definitely get the description of this movie right uh so this is the hunt uh it's uh, so I've got like a brief synopsis here on uh, fucking IMDb. Twelve strangers wake up in a <laughs> clearing and they don't know where they are or how they got there. They don't even know that even though they've been chosen for a specific purpose, the hunt. And that is literally the only synopsis that they have on IMDb, which is pretty much what I had in my mind before this movie started because I had watched like maybe this trailer on like a pre-roll ad on YouTube or something. So like I knew this was just like a like some sort of Hunger Games spinoff thing. And like the moment this movie opened before I knew what the characters were, I, in my head, I just thought redneck Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what I, I see. I, that, I, especially yeah. with the, like at the very beginning, there's like this big gunshot in the air, kind of like a poof, you know what I'm like? Oh my God. Did they just yeah. rip that? Like even oh. the beginning noise of the Hunger Games? Like, oh sure. man, is there going to be like sure. some kind of, trumpet and like hologram up there <laughs> yeah for sure dude for sure uh didn't uh was it last week well how, how long ago was it when we were when I, we, we were talking about hillary swank <laughs> oh dude, we, we've been talking about hillary swank every week i think <laughs> <laughs> like how she was not. great this movie she was great here she was great this movie yeah. Um, I like how they didn't reveal her until the end, which basically I think means that they could only afford her until the end, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like uh, let's keep it as short as possible. We do not, we cannot pay her that much. Yeah, exactly. You just get her, yeah. Plus we are having her do a big ass action fight. Let's fucking and then fight like, in the end. I saw, yeah. But, and then I saw like this, I saw this thing where like, they were like, uh, they actually shot her, her back in the very opening scene. So like, I'm like, they had to have done that all at the end. But yeah, I was just like, 100%. plus yeah, she was alone, but, so she was the only one that could they, like. She wasn't know. there on set with all the other people when they were actually in the woods. You know, she right. was never in the woods sets. She was only at a house, so she they definitely filmed all her shit in L.A. or some shit. You know, um, so I, I I've been excited about this movie. I think I talked to you about this movie uh, a little bit, but I've been excited about this movie since before it even came out. I was waiting to go see it in the theaters. This know, was like man. one of the yeah. few movies I was going to go see. I really went to go see this because of uh, Dan Lindoff. Yeah, Damon <laughs> Lindelof. When I was younger, uh, I was really into Lost. You know, like uh, Lost was such an iconic show uh, for what it did to all of TV, especially, uh, especially after the strike. Because, you know, after the strike is kind of like... Lost ended and then the strike happened. We had just really shitty television. Yeah. And then like, then we had to come back with something and um, the leftovers. This guy's done the lot. He's done lost leftovers. I think he has like a, he just has a deal with HBO. He probably like, he probably oh, owes HBO. Oh, yeah. He, he, he owes does. HBO another series. I think I bet they, because yeah, sometimes they these are usually three series kind of type things or something, but yeah, he doesn't want to do another Watchmen though. He wants to keep it that one. Wait, really? He, he wants to do that. I think HBO wants another series and they might be, they're well within their rights to do another one without him. Um, I just think that they definitely tried to get him to do another series season. He doesn't want to do another season. Wait, so there's not going to be another season of Watchmen? Technically, at this moment, no, but I believe what? HBO is going to try to make that happen. Oh, my God. Why are you, like... 
That's it. Yeah, man. That's he didn't <sighs> want to do another one. Yeah, he just wanted to keep this one the way it is. I need like one a done. moment. I need a moment for that. Just he might come Watchmen back. Was, he might come back. Watchmen was know, so but, good. Yeah, but it was like fantastic. I don't. I don't know. Like you know. I, can I don't know if it's why. all him, but he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think it's like all him, but like, dude, you know, like when you lose your rider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Things, things always sure, go yeah. south. I think he was a showrunner too. Like he was all over that show. He made that Watchmen, just a side note for Watchmen, David Lilloff, the blackest show on TV. <laughs> it's completely under, uh, under the radar, the blackest show on TV. Started off with the Tulsa riots. Ended with the black Dr. Manhattan and the, and the antagonist. What is her name? God, what is her name? She's been in everything. The main girl, what's her name? Uh, fuck. Let's fucking watch it. Uh, antagonist it or protagonist? Protagonist. Or, what's her name? What's her name? Um, or both. Protagonist, the girl who was actually. Oh, Regina King? Regina King. She was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Ended with that and then like. Sorry, when you said antagonist, because I, I was like, ended, I think, I think no. it literally took place. I think it literally all took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, before this shit went down. You know what I mean? It yeah. was just, it was like this movie that I mean, sorry, this TV show that perfectly illustrated. And I think this movie as well falls within that same category. I think in the ethos of humanity for the last five years, we've all just been kind of trying to say the same thing in artistry, and like I feel like this movie is part of it. Cat to save is part of it. Um, Fucking um, I, I, there's a, but like there's definitely an undertone of just like classism, you know what I mean? Like uh, that it's just been kind of running everything that's come out, artistry. everything that's come out, right? Like yeah, everything that's recently come out has that. And then I mean, this one kind of was more in your face about it. Yeah, it was. There was this movie had a very subtle. Towards the end, it got a little bit more evident. Um, George Orwell, 1984. Yeah. Like, um, like at, some point at some point, they're just like, you know, it's just a bunch of liberals get together and start yeah. fucking hunting the, like the off, like, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I forgot what, how they say it, but like, they just start hunting some rednecks and I'm like, whoa. Dude. Yeah. All right. So let's you just go straight. It. Let's go straight spoilers. Right. So straight yeah. up, we're just, this is a movie discussion. We're You've just going to talk time. about it in and out. Right. Um, Fucking uh, when when like so like this movie starts off um, with it with a pig coming out of the box right when they all come into the middle of the field and there's just a pig coming out of the box you don't know what the hell that's about right and then all of a sudden you figure out all these characters are rednecks and like and I, I kind of figured that before they actually like like figured out what everything was because I was just like because the way the characters were and then you yeah. slowly start figuring out that these people are the right the right wingers right so they're mm-hmm. the right wing people they're like our friend we were talking about earlier, you know, the conspiracy theorists, the the basically nope. the older people on the internet who are like us, who were when we were teenagers, just looking up Alex Jones shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> One of them was a fucking podcaster, which by the way, also like I felt a little bit, I felt a little attacked. <laughs> yeah, a little hit. I'm like, oh damn, yeah, dude. Yeah. Damn, I'm doing Why that too. Why are we attacking kinda, them? <laughs> yeah. Like, and then it turns out that the people hunting them are the fucking liberals, mm-hmm. the liberal elite in the world, right? <laughs> it's just like, and like all of a sudden when you're watching this movie, I'm just like, I'm getting hit like left and right with all these fucking, all this like, um, just uh, like undertones of symbolism about the world we're currently living in. The classism, no, up. the right wing, the left wing, the everything just coming together. It's just like blew my mind is how like of the moment. Where's the hand sanitizer? I don't know, man. Yeah, Why dude, don't you just rough yeah. it up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then like, um, it all came together with a George Orwell undertone, which kind of like gave way to the the real classism thing of it all. Um, then like the very end of the movie where she, <laughs> she starts talking about Snowball and her character. Love that, um, yeah. And I want to give props to the actress, the main actress here. What uh, is her name? Betty Gilpin? I, I, Betty Gilpin? Uh, I Betty, she, Betty Gilpin. Carol in the movie? Betty is Gilpin? It? Betty Gilpin, I met probably her. Yeah, Betty Gilpin. She wears crystal. Yeah. She was great. I don't know where she's been. Uh, she sells a whole movie for me. Uh, and, like, with her performance at the end with her and Hilary Swank, and they're, like, facing off, and, like, they're having, like, conversation about whether or not she picked the right crystal. Right. With that, like, with that, like undertone of George Arrow questioning. It was just fantastic little button on top. And, then like, at the beginning of this movie was definitely, uh, it definitely harkened back to Lost as well because like 
So the big thing about loss was like, he always tells this story, uh, how like when he first approached, when he was first approached about doing loss, he like didn't know what he wanted to do. He just kind of like gave this idea to JJ Abrams and they ran with it when he was like, what if we have like a pilot and like, the, and like everybody in the movie and everybody at the beginning goes with this pilot at the beginning of this tragedy. And then like halfway through the beginning of the first episode, he just fucking dies. Right. So you felt that kind of, uh, that like, um, that character twisty kind of stuff at the beginning where people just start dying left and right, you know? Like I know you think, you think they're going to be the hero. You're like, oh man, okay, I'm following the hero now. All right, you know, like you, you start really early on, like Emma Roberts must be yeah, some sort of the lead in this. And like, yeah. they're like, nope, she wasn't. <laughs> like nope. they didn't give a, it was uh, also, you know, who's done that really well, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones kind of, killed that for us you know like man i have my heart set on this yeah. character right yeah, now yeah, yeah i'm following them yeah one uh, of the better uh, yeah. this guy has star status you know like yeah. that's how yeah, i yeah, felt yeah. the whole time i was like i know this guy he's on this is us we're gonna follow him for a little bit i'm like yeah. okay no nope we're not okay i know this guy he's a good comedian yeah no no no, we're not gonna follow yeah. it. The, the, it. The no. dude that looks like uh, Ricky Brashear. Do you know? Uh, do you know who I'm talking oh, about? Oh, the big tall dude that like used to be <laughs> on uh, Boy Meets World. Um, he played the fat, fat kid, the goofy fat bully. He played that archetype in like a ton of movies. No, no, no. I'm talking about um, Ethan. It's oh um, crap. I'm like lost. Was he like the first? Was he like the first guy? Is like, not Ricky Brashear's. Oh, oh, you're talking about the old dude. Staten Island. Ike Barinholtz. Ike Barinholtz. Okay. Oh, yeah, that fucking dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you seeing this oh, dude? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah, at see, this I, dude's I, I face. See, I see, yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, even yeah. this dude's cover IMDb photo just looks like Ricky's face. <laughs> yeah, it does. You're right. You're right. You're right. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a character actor. He definitely does stuff. But he's usually a, a really funny comedian. Like, I mean, he's he's just been in a lot of funny shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like even that guy. Like, I was like, oh, I know this guy. He's on like Neighbors Two or something. Like, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna be here for a little bit. Nope, not not even him. No, like, he would just fucking right left and right, which adds to the, like the good pacing of this movie. You know, like yes. it was like they just kill people left. Like, wh- like it was like halfway through, and they were like everybody's dead already. <laughs> that was on that field no. and you're like damn okay good plot twists every yeah. every couple like that's what helped pace this was like even an hour and a half which i think this movie ran an hour and a half yeah it was just paced is paced to where it was like it felt like an hour an hour or something because like every single t- time you turn there was like uh like if you get if you got up to get a drink you were gonna miss somebody exploding Especially yeah, in, the, sure. in the first 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah. It was just blast out. It was just came yeah. out quick. Yeah. Was, um, just on top of that, like, I just wanted to, like, shout out to the director, too. Uh, Craig Zobel. He's done a lot of Westworld. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, Westworld uh, is... Westworld I'm sorry. He's done, like, an episode. He's done an episode of Westworld, a couple episodes of The Leftovers. Um, do you do the good episodes of Westworld? Oh. That's, uh... Oh, fuck yeah. If you did Aka no Mai, that is one of the best episodes of television I have ever seen. Are you serious? Aka no Mai? You, you, it's it's oh, the Japanese one. Yes. That is the best episode, of, one of the best television episodes of, I've ever seen. We knew this wasn't going <laughs> to this wasn't gonna be that great, but it, it really did surprise me in a couple ends. But yeah, I can see that like um, after talking about it, even just talking about it just now, I mean... That uh, Betty Gilpin, she just she changed yeah. it for me. Uh, like, and like she, uh, when I looked her up, she's in a uh, Glow, and like now I really want to watch it because I I love Allison Brie, yeah. and uh, I hear Allison Brie does like an amazing job in Glow. So now now getting impressed with Betty Gilpin, then like okay, I'm like okay, I might have to go go out and watch this just just. Uh, just to see what this girl can do. Dude, she was Becca in fucking Stuber. Have you seen Stuber? Why does that sound familiar? What's Stuber? It's the one with Camille Nimjiani and um, uh, Dave Bautista. He pays like an Uber driver. 
and like Batista's oh. like a cop. Anyway, yeah, it's a decent. I know what it, you're talking about. Yeah, it's a good little movie. Yeah, she plays. That's she plays a character in there. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the. Oh, sorry, I don't recognize that guy by name. I just know him from. <laughs> I just remember him. From Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, she's in Glow. She's in another. She was in another series. I, I thought before that. Uh, I've seen her IMDb. She was. She's got an American Crime Story. Nurse Jackie, I guess. I never watched that. She apparently, was on The Grudge. She's definitely on Glow. Dog's Journey. Robot Chicken. She's a voice. American Gods, which is, is a TV show I want to watch. I've got the book. Elementary Masters of Sex. Mercy Street. She's well, been around for a while. Yeah, she's she's been one of these actors been working. She's been working. You know, she's one of these character actors. She's actually she, she was wonderful, man. Uh, I think that her like performance uh, definitely elevated this. Uh, what I think is uh, an okay script. Yeah, um, her performance was really good, man. Like she had, she had moments, man. Like real subtle moments that really. F- like let you understand what kind of character she was and where she was in the world. Um, and, and she also like her character really brought down, like brought open the mythos of the George Orwell um, kind of too light for us. Oh yeah. 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 Cause you, you knew there was going to be some kind of thing there whenever the pig comes out, like, like yeah. you said in the beginning, when the pig it comes became out of the definitely box, evident. a it became dressed evident. pig, the well-dressed pig. That's yeah. what like, that's what like screamed George Orwell to me. Like, I think I forget. I forget when I saw. I think the 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 old guy mentioned Animal Farm at, at a moment, and that's when I clicked for me. And then towards the end, when like she had the when then when then the end when the, the climax, when she had that like that like um, standoff with Hilary Swank's character, yeah. it came it just came out completely. Yeah. Um, up to that that last fight was insane that like fist fight that just girl fight at the end that just lasted heard, for like yeah a like i saw i saw minutes. in the um uh, i saw in the extra like the extra scenes that they like they built that the whole house as a set just to like break <laughs> there was yeah. like yeah we just made a set that we can have a fight scene in and like yeah. fuck it up <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah and it and, looked like that too yeah, and it was well well choreographed. Um, well they, they choreographed, really wanted to like, yeah. Go ahead. Did, did you notice like every every like every like couple frames they would put a fucking they would put a a punching bag in the same frame as Hillary Swank. No, no. Did you notice there was a couple frames like even at the like uh, before the climax where they did like that uh that that um that flashback scene. Yeah. Uh, like as as the as the camera turned to reveal Hillary Swank, there was a punching bag behind her. Yeah. Right? And then the next scene where she was at when they were like picking the people, there was a punching bag behind her while she was working out. And then in the scene where there was the standoff, there was a punching bag in like the kitchen behind them. And then there was I didn't a punching notice the bag one in the, the back. I noticed yeah. the box the one that she when she was practicing like yeah. kickboxing or whatever you know, in the middle of the movie, but I didn't notice the one at the end. Yeah. They, I feel like they were just doing visual cues to like, Hey, remember that box of movie she was in? That's Million funny. Dollar baby dude. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I, know, I this girl knows, knows how to box. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah um, yeah, I heard, um, I heard like this thing was well choreographed. Uh, I'm sorry. I heard the choreographer like spent a lot of time on like character development between the two because they really wanted to make her like, Athena and then, you know, Medusa kind of type thing. Like, okay. Yeah. This, this whole thing. I don't know. Totally saw that, man. I mean, they were just, they were both, it was really well choreographed. You could totally see when it was stunt doubles, you know, every time they were on the ground and their hair would just completely cover their faces. Right. You know, and they yeah. were just like, you obviously knew there was a swap. Then yeah. they got stabbed a lot. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of stabby stabs. Yep. Um, uh, but the end, you know, the end, it, it pays homage, uh, I feel like with the uh, she dresses up, she gets all dressed up. It's just it's it was screaming its point the whole time. That's I kind of hate when movies kind of yell at you what what I'm trying to say, yeah. <laughs> Instead of yeah. just saying it, yeah. Uh, I guess maybe we've just been watching some brilliant film that's like that's kind of screaming these ideas at you, but they're 
they're in such the subtle way that it's just like beautiful that, that we've lately that we've been watching. And then this one is just yeah. like, look, she's dressed up and she's going to drink the fucking champagne that they talked about in the beginning of the movie. You wouldn't have known <laughs> yeah. about the champagne unless we told you about it in the opening scene of the movie. Caviar yeah. and champagne. That's what we're talking yeah. about. In case you don't remember, <laughs> yeah. I want you to show you this. <laughs> The stewardess. I don't know. Are we, we can't call him stewardess anymore. Sorry, flight attendant. I don't know. I don't we, know. <laughs> like, I'm not um, going <laughs> We're going to show you this flight attendant that was in that first scene. <laughs> and <laughs> we're just going to let you know that's what this scene's about. <laughs> right. I was like, right. This geez. is what's going on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely heavy handed stuff. You know, it's just one of those things you do as a screenwriter. You know, it's like one of those like, uh, like things you just slap in there to make yourself feel like you're actually writing a movie, you know, so. like, Oh, a little bit of foreshadowing here. And then you just go Ooh. back, parking back to the beginning. So like, we know it's all tight little bow. It's like tight little bow shit that uh, screenwriters do. Um, but I, I, I think, um, I think like it definitely became heavy handed and that's kind of the fault of the script, right? The script isn't, the screenplay isn't great. Um, it's definitely a little heavy handed at some times and maybe the character development is, uh, I mean, I mean this, is, this is just a fucking popcorn hour and a half quick horror thriller fucking classist movie um, that doesn't really take itself too seriously most of the time is mostly, there's mostly like character actors from like sitcoms and like B movies in here. Um, but it's definitely elevated by the performances of the main character. Um, yep. And uh, there's still, some, there's still some subtle brilliance in the script that I think, you know, probably Lindelof brought into it that I think um, definitely communicated a point uh, that was, you know, uh, very overt and necessary, but also really fun. Uh, So I think that's, you know, that's what I think of the movie. It's a good time. I'd watch it again. if It was like on a Saturday afternoon. It was on HBO. For sure. (laughs) (laughs) I was just staying quiet for a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I think, uh, it was, yeah, it did surprise me. I did not think it was going to be as good as it did, <laughs> as it was. I thought it was just going to be an awful, like, really bad horror film, but it had a lot more substance than, like, than I, I was than I was expecting, at least. And, yeah, I think uh, there was some kind of, uh, there was some creative writing and uh, a little bit of good direction that made this film... Uh, film make this film stand out than just like any other um what movie would you most compare re, uh, a recent like uh just blindly what what movie would you think this falls in with um in budget wise like that was just made in the last two two or three years um i mean you've got things like um ready uh, i'm just saying like th- ready or think not of something Okay. Ready or not, it was just released. Um, another movie kind of in this vein. Um, um, I think... Uh, rank them least expensive to most expensive. This is a, Blum, this is a Blumhouse movie, too. Um, Hold on. Rate this from least expensive to most expensive. Okay. I don't know if you're looking at any numbers, but Ready or Not, not. The Hunt, and The First Purge. The very first purge or like the movie The First Purge? The movie The First Purge. All right, I'm gonna say The Hunt's at the bottom. Okay. Then I'm gonna say As cheapest, right? That's what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The hunt's the cheapest, the most expensive. I'm gonna say I think the first purge is probably well, first purge is definitely most expensive, so second expensive is it gonna be ready or not? Okay. You ready for the numbers? You ready for the numbers? Yes, sure. Sure. Ready? The first Purge had a $13 million budget. Okay. This is exactly what we're talking about. Like, almost almost get into those single-digit millions. Yeah. Yeah. And um, ready or not, $6 million budget. Wow. This is a good movie. I like the movie a lot. 
half, more than half of the first purge. Wow. Just so you, just so you can put yeah. that in perspective. Yeah, like, yeah, so. yeah. The hunt used fourteen million dollars. Wow! It was the highest budget. Wow! Of those three movies, just That's thought, crazy. Thought you, <laughs> I can see it now. Yeah, I can see it now, but I can also see how this that kind of goes to show you. It, it really matters, like what your director is and the writing. It can really up your production value. Because I, I watched Ready or Not. I haven't seen the first purge. I liked Ready or Not a lot. They lost a lot of money because, I mean, it came out in the middle. I mean, like when, when somebody says the middle of this epi- epidemic, you know, that, but like right in the beginning of this epidemic, uh, March 13th, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't going to the movies in fucking February. I wasn't doing yeah. shit in February, dude. I was, I was fucking, I was worried about this shit January. Cause I, and then in February, I knew shit was going to go down. Right. I right. knew shit was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so let, like, just to put it in perspective, uh, I think when the world got slapped in the face was um, when the NBA season got canceled. The night the NBA season got canceled, yeah. Yeah. no one could not know about it at that point. Yeah. And that was yeah. March 11th. Yeah. This movie got released two days after that. After the NBA got canceled yeah. on the 13th, it, it was, I told you the budget was 14 million. It yeah. only made $8 million world, world, worldwide. Damn. They'll make it back a little bit in uh, digital sales. That's insane. I, <laughs> Sorry. I don't think they thought they were going to get this much of a loss though. Like no Maybe way. Maybe not, you know, as a, you know, move the movie industry, just like all their entertainment industries are, they're in a moment, man. Well, yeah, I like that movie. Um, all right. Uh, cool. Good to go? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, all right. Thanks you for watching, guys. Appreciate it. My name's Arnie. I'm Andy. Uh, please follow me, Arnie Diaz 89 on everything. YouTube, uh, Arnie Diaz. And go fucking watch a movie. Go fucking watch a movie. And scene. <laughs>